Shalom, this is Rabbi David Vasquez. Uh, we have a wonderful guest for you today. If you've never heard of our next guest, you're missing out on this talented woman. Uh, so invite your friends, sit back as we start the show right now. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpuchat Havarim. This is your host, Rabbi David Vasquez, and welcome to Congregation Beth Emanuel Presents, Walking in the Footsteps of the Moshiach. Today we have a special guest who is a soprano, messianic worship songwriter, and Latino artist. Uh, she has a master's degree in arts, in music, and opera performance from the University of Central Florida. For the last 10 years, the Puerto Rican soprano Arlene Ramirez has been researching the Judeo-Spanish heritage and its cultural influence over Puerto Rico and the Caribbean. Throughout her journey, she has been able to make beautiful discoveries and personal connections that have led her to create the Borinquen Safare Ladino Music Project, a musical project devoted to preserving the Ladino language and to educate about the Hispanic Safari heritage. Uh, Borinquen Safari is a fusion of Sephardic Caribbean music with Middle Eastern candidacies and melodies. With her recent single release, Abraham Avino, Ladino Ancient Song and its music video, Arlene has captivated the audience and established the Borican Safari Ladino Music Project as one of the incalculable cultural value to the Hispanic community and a legacy to the Hispanic young generations. The soprano has been formed on the contra stage in opera, music theater, popular flamenco, and Hindisconic music. She has had the opportunity to work as an actress in TV commercials and theatrical plays. Arlene has performed with the Puerto Rico Lyric Opera, the Boston Conservatory Opera Theater, the Florida Opera Theater. She has been a soloist with the Arlington Philharmonic, uh, the Puerto Rico Philharmonic, and the Inter-America University of Puerto Rico Choir, and the Boston Conservatory um, Concert Choir. Arlene has been a vocal coach and singing teacher for the last 13 years. During 2010 to 2011, she has an adjunct voice professor at the music department of the Inter-America University of Puerto Rico. She has also been one of the vocal coaches of the TV singing reality show, The Voice Kids in Telemundo TV Network, and Pequeños Gigantes USA at Univision Network. Arlene has also worked as a vocal coach for several recording artists she keeps on passing the legacy of music, appreciation, and singing techniques at her private studio, Singing institution, Institute, and Performing Arts. Please, let's welcome Arlene Ramirez. So Arlene, shalom, welcome to the program. And um, uh, that's very long. Uh, you have a long bio, and I didn't even cover all of it because, my God, you have such, such a, a, a vast reputation of, of doing many things, and I praise God for that. I hope that God continues to bless you, and the next time we'll just get a scroll at him, we'll just read it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all the blessings that God has bestowed upon you. Baruch Hashem. It's all, it's all by His grace, certainly, uh, all by His mercy. And um, and first of all, thank you so much for having me in your show. It, oh, it's it an honor such, to have you. It is such a blessing and honor. Thank you. 
Amen. You're welcome. You're welcome. We we thank you for, for coming out and, and joining us today. And uh, we know that you're in very warm weather while we're here suffering in the cold. Well, that's okay. We're not, we're not going to hold that against <laughs> you today. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I can, I can gonna, send you some warm. <laughs> send us some warm in a box somewhere, you know, maybe it could melt some of the snow around here. But uh, <laughs> we plan to continue on praising God today. And, and we thank you so okay. much again for joining us. Um, Charlie, in the, in the past 10 years, you have been researching the Judeo-Spanish heritage and its cultural influence over Puerto Rico and the Caribbean. Can you tell the viewers uh, what led you to this research? Well, first of all, I think that what what has shaped my life in terms of you know Hashem's purpose over my life and my family's life as well is music ultimately that's the portion of the arts it was what he has used to really lead me into his presence for all of my life so it started out with music um actually <laughs> as I was uh doing my um uh, my undergrad degree on to completing on to moving grad school i had to i had to write an essay to go to grad school and by the time that i was going to grad school i had already had a professional career in music at the same time so i was already singing flamenco professionally and um and 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 you know flamenco was something that came out for me very easily it was part of my life like i grew up I grew up singing flamenco and cante hondo for fun, not knowing mm -hmm. where that came from, right? <laughs> and so all that curiosity, both in my personal life and history and, and with music led me to write an essay for my entrance for grad school towards the influences of, of, of um, Eastern music, mm -hmm. uh, Middle Eastern and Oriental music towards the music of Puerto Rico. Wow. And that opened, like we say, a can of worms, <laughs> <laughs> but good ones, because that's where my journey began and in always in, in yes. So that's how I started out. Oh, praise God. Praise it. God. I could imagine when you first tapped into that, like you said, it opened up a can of worms and all of a sudden your curiosity just built and got greater and greater. And you kept on searching and searching to what God has uh, has led you to today. And um, I mean, that's that's something awesome uh, to see how a, a person can, you know, just writing a paper, you know, just yes. doing that together, this this doing this research that God was able to move you in the direction he did. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about your encounter with Yeshua. Like, how did that kind of happen in the midst of all this that was going on in your life? Yes. So, you know, um, as I was going to undergrad school, you know how this is something that most people can relate to. I guess you can relate to that. And, and, you know, that when we go into college, it's another whole, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different world. Right. Mm -hmm. And no matter how you've been brought up, whether in the faith, whether or not in the faith, you start having your own, your own, you start getting to your own conclusions and going through your own process in terms of your spiritual life and just your life in general. So in grad school, undergrad school, I had quite an interesting life. And I went from uh, being a Catholic, and I say Catholic because there were other things in between, raised um, girl into Buddhism, um, New Age, all oh, wow. of those things. And I know now that it was because I was searching up. Yeah, you were, you were in a journey. I was in a journey. I was oh. always, I wasn't always, I was never conformed with uh, with my life the way it was. I lost my mom when I was seven years old. She passed away, and from that point on, I went I, I went what I call into a deep state of research, <laughs> of inner research, even without me knowing, even without me realizing that that was what was going on and how. How you know how Adonai was using all of those experiences of life to drive me towards Him. Now, my father, he was a devoted Catholic, which later led me to understand why was it that he was like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, and he, yes, he did teach me the fear of the Lord. However, everything was so confusing to me. Like I never, I never settled down for for being a Catholic. You know, I was right, like right. kind of like the like the rebel one. Like my <laughs> it wasn't my, sitting right with your soul. <laughs> yes, it didn't fit with my with my soul, and so I was always 
you know, struggling and battling and I was a defiant one. So it all came to a boiling point when I got into college. And of course, in college, you have all sorts of influences, you know. And so I went through a lot of situations, good and not so good situations. And um, it took, I always say that I was a late bloomer, um, a, late, a late bloomer in terms of uh, um, maturing emotionally. Mm -hmm. And I guess that has to do a lot with my nature as an artist, because we are kind of like bohemian and, you know, we, we're always trying to find out the reason right. why and this and that, right. and then put into the equation, my heritage, you know, there was so mm -hmm. much going there, going on there. So it wasn't until I actually had my first daughter, which I had her in the middle of finishing my undergrad because I moved, I started my undergrad in Puerto Rico and then I moved to Boston to finish my undergrad at the Boston Conservatory. And while in the Boston conserva Conservatory and married to my first husband, I became pregnant with my first daughter. Right. And that was a turning point in my life because I had a supernatural experience where uh, my back then mother-in-law, uh, she got really sick with cancer and I had to take care of her, even though I was going through a separation and all those things. And I really met Yeshua face to face through this woman who was an athe atheist who did not believe in the Lord whatsoever. Huh. <laughs> and that's what I was involved into. That's how I got involved with New Age and all of these things. And wow. I got to see this woman uh, going uh, through her dying process and having an encounter with Adonai and um and, you know, and at that very moment, when I was going through that situation with her, I didn't know what else to do, but to call on to God, which was what my father, which I am grateful for. And I understand he instilled that, was, that in you, correct? He, yes, he instilled that in my heart. So I started calling upon, you know, upon Yeshua, which was the only thing that I knew that was going to, you know, to, 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 to kind of like help her going through that process, mm -hmm. not knowing that that process was not only for her, but it was also for me, oh. which led me years later through my research, uh, his, my, his, my, my, my research pertaining history and music and all of that, it all brought me together to the person of Yeshua, you know? So when you, were, when you were seeing her in this condition, and you started to pray to the Lord, I deny to her, but you were praying to her in the way that your father instilled in the Catholic way. Not that well, you knew him in the messianic way, but you knew him at that point in the Catholic way, but God was bringing you towards a different path. Right, sure. but you know what? It's funny because I had walked away from the Catholic way years ago. Okay. And through, throughout my walking um, and throughout my process, I had already kind of like detached from everything that had to do with Catholicism. And through that process, I went to evangelical churches. Through that process, also my 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 um, my grandmother by my mother's side, she was an evangelical. So I remember that as a kid, after my mother had passed away and I would stay with my grandma during the weekends, I would go to the evangelical church with it, with with her, which was another experience because those <laughs> because those were what we called in Spanish um, er, er, raja tabla or oh, extreme the, the, Iglesia Pentecostal, Pentecostal, the, the Pentecostal yes. Hispanic Church. Yeah. Right. So that was the the other extreme. So I had already had an encounter with both sides, yet I had come to my to my own. Um, to my own conclusion in my own way. So mm -hmm. it did not have to do with one or another, but I mm -hmm. did know who the, the God of the Bible, of the scriptures were, mm -hmm. you know, or was. And, you know, it's funny because knowing who I am now, knowing where I come from, you know, Adonai is just one, you know, That's and right. he will always lead us. Always, whenever we are hungry, whenever we feel hunger, not even knowing what we're doing in our own, you know, understanding, mm -hmm. 
he will always lead us to the right source. That's because right. what I do remember is that ever since I was a kid, I would always go back to what we, we know that it is the Torah, right? Mm -hmm. And to what they used to call Old Testament back in the days. Mm -hmm. And that was what was instilled in my heart. And I remember that at that time, I would, what I would do, you know what I would do? I would recite to her the Psalms. Oh, wow. But I couldn't complete them because I didn't know one by heart. <laughs> right, right. But I do remember that I used to love the Psalms and through all the different processes of my life that I went through before I had my final encounter with Yeshua as, you know, Yeshua, our Jewish Messiah, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I was my, you know, my soul, my heart was being led towards that very identity and so that's how I understood and at that time when she was going through that process at the hospital because I had to stay with her at the hospital not knowing that that was the day that she was going to pass away um, um that's that's exactly what I did I you know I did what I knew mm -hmm. for what Adonai himself had kind of like led me towards I mean, I was complete ignorant by then, and I still am in many areas. But, you know, to say that I really didn't know anything at that time, just what the Ruach himself was doing in my life. Oh, yeah, I, th I think I believe that, you know, God um, reaches people different ways. And it is a journey for all of us. And for you, you know, it started from the background that your father had taught you your heritage, you know, as right. being a, a Catholic person, but not really into the Catholic religion right. and how right. God was trying to awaken your soul, your your spirit, your pneuma and, and getting and getting your spirit in tune with him. He guided you at the same time you were searching with all these different religions, but you knew what you knew and you knew that. Okay, you know this identity of this Jesus at this time, and now God is showing you a different identity of the Hebrew Yeshua, the Yeshua yes. who walked the earth, you know, uh, the, the Jewish Messiah. And right. you came to that realization. I think, you know, we all go through that journey. You know, I myself went through a different type of journey, but um, but I, most people I, I've heard that have been Christian in the past, they have gone through this journey searching for an answer because they're not satisfied with what they receive. They want to know a little bit right. more. Yeah. And that's just right. awesome yes. how God did that to you. So when you gave your life to the Lord um, in the way that you will call it now, the way you gave it to him now, was it, was it, let's say, in your house? Did it happen in a, in a church? Did it happen in a synagogue? Or how did exactly that, that, that um, meeting Yeshua happen? It was, it was, it was a personal encounter. Personal with encounter with him. It was a personal encounter, and I always say that it was, it was a level by level personal encounter. Because I always say that there is, there are certain people that just as you know, it happened to Paul, they are suddenly struck, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and you know, it happens all at once. Mm -hmm. For me, it was a process, but it was very personal because I have always been which is what led me ultimately to all this research and to finally come realize about my own, um, you know, my own uh, culture or heritage and all of that. It was precisely the way that I am, that I like to research. I like to see so things by, you know, by myself and asking questions and all of those things. So I believe that, you know, Adonai knew that he had to deal with me personally <laughs> in a way that it wasn't through anyone of course i would re i would receive confirmations because he would he would because he would he would use his people you know throughout right. my journey and he would use he would use literally the stones <laughs> to um confirm that i was on the right, right track on of course and this is very important i met my husband um we've been we've been together married for 20 years almost 20 years now and i met him and um he had his own journey of uh, also um, a man with an amazing calling of the Lord. And we came to this journey together. Oh, wow. And That's so good. he dealt, yes, he dealt with us together yet individually. He's having his background and me having my background, but it's amazing because he put us together in a way where everything started making sense. And so we both, after a couple of years, you know, of, of, of us, 
going to trying to, you know, kind of like look for him in the way that he had been taught. And I had been not so much taught of what I thought it was the right thing without mm -hmm. knowing very well. We went to, you know, to Christian church churches and stuff like that and we did you know we did receive um you know confirmations from from Adonai because of course he's everywhere he you know his name is praised <laughs> there will always be a movement of his ruach he is there right he is there but um but you know but we weren't we we were not conformed we knew that there was something else our our soul our heart, our blood, it was just calling. It was a yearning. We, we, we would never be satisfied until finally about 10 years ago, which is, it coincides with my uh, journey about the Latino research and all of that. We finally started finding out about all of these things, which had to do with our heritage, with our culture, with our, our Jewish heritage, our own, you know, things. It's funny because when I was doing the Ladino research, one of the things that struck me the most was to find words. This is a little bit funny, but <laughs> I always like to tell this story because it is very important. So my husband, who is from the north part of Puerto Rico, and sure. I am from the west south part of Puerto Rico, he would always make fun of me because I used certain words that were very funny for him. He would never, he had never heard those words before. And, and it's because you're from different parts of the island? It is because of that, but also because of my Ladino. Ah, uh, okay. Because of how close the Sephardic generation was still going on in my family. And so when I started researching about the Ladino and you know how, ha how that has to do with our Judeo-Spanish heritage, right? Our, our Bene Anusim, mm -hmm. uh, you know, blood in us. It was amazing because um, I found all, many of those words that I still use to this day. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, I started telling him, well, you know, this is because you see, you see, this is my heritage. It's actually not, you know, it's not a, a, a it's not a word that is misused. It's actually my Ladino heritage. But you know, I, I found that funny. Um, and now he understands you after all this he time. Understands he understands me, you. But Amen. not only does he understand me, but he discovered also that he he has also uh, Sfaradi uh, lineage, oh. and is and it's even his generation is closer than mine because his family came from the Canary Islands and he's like third or yeah, third generation. Oh, okay. Awesome. That's, that's it's good. Very, God just brought you guys together in a certain unique way. In a unique way, unique way. And it's funny because from his side, he was raised uh, evangelical Pentecostal. So he, that's all he knew. Hmm. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's beautiful what he, he did. He always has plans. And so that's how I, I, I had my encounter with Yeshua, oh, wow. you know, our, our Messiah. It was, it was a process. I think, you, you know, know, like, like I was saying before, as we all go through a journey, um, you know, in, in some people's cases, as in yours, I think God was stripping away the layers. Oh, yes. To get To get you where he wanted you to be. You know, and now that you yes. guys are together, you guys are following the ways of the Moshiach and he's teaching you guys and you guys are working together in 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 your ministry as husband and wife, which is the yes. important thing. And that's such a blessing um, for, for us to hear that as a testimony and what God, how God brought you uh, to him. And it, it was a journey, you know, and some people think it's going to be a fast thing, it has to be a dramatic thing or whatever. Everyone yeah. is a little bit different. It happens differently for everyone. And, um, you know, it's a unique experience for each individual, how they meet Yeshua, you know, and that's perfect. Um, yeah. You know, you have um, also, you have um, a current project uh, called the Borinquen Sefarad Ladino Music Project. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So that is part of this, um, you know, research that I've been working on for 10 mm -hmm. years, which started just a, out of curiosity and it started out with me having to submit a paper for grad school. Right. And even after I was in grad school, I have to tell you, because this is another testimony, 
even after I finished grad school here in Central Florida, which it wasn't easy because just after one semester after having started grad school, I got pregnant with my fourth child. And oh. that was not in the horizon whatsoever. It wasn't in the plans. <laughs> that was not in my plans, definitely. Um, and literally, you know, uh, Adam and I had to speak to my heart and, you know, bring a word of, of, of reassurance that this was part of his plan for me to be able to continue on. Um, and even after I graduated, I was asking myself, why did I do this, this, you know, this master's degree? I really don't find the purpose to it because I ended up studying something when I got into the program, they basically sold me a program, but then it, I realized that it was so different from what I had been expecting. Wow. Um, and uh, now after three years after having graduated, I see the purpose, I see his plan. It was nothing that was, you know, according to my plan, but he's, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this research, um, that started out as me, for me to go to grad school. It just, you know, the grad school ended up helping me to be a bit better researcher. Why? Because the program, it was supposed to be an opera program. Yet I ended up with countless hours of music research because of certain class uh, classes that I had to take that had to do with music research per se. And there I was complaining why in the world am I, am I, if I am an opera singer and this is what I came here for, why do I have to spend countless hours learning how to research? <laughs> and you, and you saw that that was going to help you later on in your life. You didn't know it at that time. It was going to help you later on. Exactly. It was going to help me with, um, you know, starting to, uh, to give shape to this whole um, Ladino um, research project. So the Boricans Farad, it's actually, it is the research about our Sephardic heritage mm -hmm. um, from a musician perspective. Um, so, you know, we as Hispanics, especially in Puerto Rico, where I come from, you know, we are very cultural. We are, we are very strong, like our music is, is, is our major heritage. Mm -hmm. You know that there's a saying that says that wherever you go in Puerto Rico or Cuba or Re Dominican Republic, that you hit a plant and a singer or a musician comes bouncing out of it. Oh, really? I've never heard that. Wow. Yes. So meaning that there's a musician or a singer or an artist every every two inches. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to be careful when we hit the plants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Close oh. to one, one to another. And so me being a musician and, and, and that was the way that, you know, God used for me to come closer to my roots, to come closer to him, to know the Yeshua, Amen. the Jewish Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. I, you know, I started, I started researching and I said, wait a second, we need to come closer to Yeshua this way mm -hmm. because we have lost our identity along the way. There's a huge percentage of the population of Puerto Rico that who come uh, from um, who have Judeo Spanish heritage uh -huh. who are what we are what we know as Bene and Usim, right? Uh -huh. The forced ones, those who were forced out of Spain um, by the Inquisition. Right. And you know, I I was always meditating on how is it that Puerto Rico, its identity, it's so it's kind of like so people are so confused about their identity. Like they don't know who they are. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was one of those rabbi, I have to confess. And I probably, this is the first time that I'm going to say this in public, <laughs> but I was one of those because of my nature that I was one of those who were very patriotic in the sense of not patriotic, like we want to be pa patriotic, but patriotic in the sense of, yes, uh, let's fight for, for a land, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and almost kind of like, you know, a nationalista kind of thing, you know? Nash, right, right, nationalist type of thing. It, yeah, right, which has nothing to do with, you know? With, right, right, right. With patriotism. But that's the confusion that there is in my island. Yeah. 
And as I was going through this research, you know, Adonai started ministering to my heart that there is a lack of identity, especially religious identity. And when you look at my island, Puerto Rico, as well as many islands in the Caribbean or the major islands, you know, Catholic, the Catholic religion was a religion that, you know, it, it, it took over. And I don't want to talk bad about anyone or anything, mm -hmm. but it's just then, you know, other religions came along the way. And there was such a huge misunderstanding of, of it all that people kind of like melted all in a pot and, you know, just missed the mark. And mm -hmm. so one of the things that I understood that Adonai is using nowadays is for people to discover that there is more than they have been told um, throughout history. That's right. Because, you know, the scriptures is history. Mm -hmm. And I always love talking about this because I always say that the more you study scriptures through the scope of history, the more real it becomes. Oh, definitely. Most definitely. Definitely. You, right? get, you get to know that there's the version, you know, and I, and I, and I said to my, to my wife and to my congregation not so long ago, I said, you know, I would love to do a, a little skit here for the congregation that's called, um, um, what was it? Um, was it Tell the Truth? Did that show? It, there, was a, there was a show back in the day. I forget the name of it right now. I can't, it doesn't come to my mind that um, the persons will come out and there'll be three different people and they will all say their name were, for example, Yeshua, okay? Right. And then the people, the audience, or, or the, the people that are playing the game show had to identify which one of them was the real Yeshua was really telling the truth, okay? So they will all claim they were Yeshua. At the end of the show, they would say, okay, who do you think, which contestant do you think is Yeshua? And one would say, I think number two, I think number three or number one, and then can, can the real Yeshua please stand up? And you would see all three of them stand up, but only one will remain standing, which was the real one. And I think, like as you were saying, people have this concept of who Yeshua, Jesus is throughout their religion, through their faith, but they don't know the Hebrew Yeshua. Right. The one of the scriptures. And then when right. you compare them together, they're not the same. They're actually two different people. And I think right. that's what's happening. We're having an awakening of the spirit right. of people coming to this knowledge saying, wait a minute, you know what? I've been told a lie. This right. isn't the Yeshua that we know. You know, right. I, I met another Yeshua. And I think that's what's happening, not just in, 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 in Christianity, but in Hinduism and all different types yes, of religion. Yes. People yes. are coming to the knowledge of the God of Israel. Right. And right. I mean, I, that's what's happening, I believe, through the spirit in the last right. days. And this is not limited. Like, I like to tell people, um, this is my calling. And this is an individual calling that I have pertaining to how things went with me. But mm -hmm. it is not limited to awaken those who have for, you know, putting it that way, oh, S -S -S Sephardic lineage or, you know, or, or they are B'nai Anusim or whatever you might want to call it. This is for everyone. That's this right. is for everyone. But that's my calling and specifically because there are a lot of people who, with whom I've worked. So, I, you know, I, I, I am an academic by Hashem's grace, not because, you know, and, and I am an academic whom nowadays <laughs> I I don't, I don't, you know, I don't judge people by its cover and I don't, and I don't believe in people having, you know, um, having higher education just because they went to college or anything like that. Right, right. But what I mean by that is that this is the way that Hashem led me. And so I know that there are a lot of people who are like me or, you know, which, which is the people that the Lord has driven me towards that the only way that they have been able to open their eyes is precisely because they're looking for what I've had found, for what mm -hmm. I have. If you and, seek, you shall find, the Bible says. Yes, and it's amazing because this project, um, I'm gonna tell you just a quick thing, mm -hmm. because I ha I've had people from Puerto Rico, from almost from all over the world, even from Israel, um, whom have, and I'm talking about Orthodox Jewish, 
um, you know, Christian people, Catholic, all of those people whom have found one thing in common, and that's we are all children of Abraham, you know? That's right. That's right. <laughs> With this Abraham Avino song, and some people have just opened their hearts saying, you know, this song has brought tears to my eyes, such as the case of this man in Puerto Rico who's a Taino descendant and that's what he advocates for but he for the first time he confessed to me through a message on Facebook saying that when he heard that son it brought tears to his eyes to his eyes mm -hmm. because his grandfather he was from the Canary Islands he was a Jewish Spanish and he used to tell him do not ever forget that one side of you it's Jewish and uh, he used to sing the song to him and he was from he's from Caguas Puerto Rico to my amusement when I look at his picture he's a Taino you know and mm -hmm, I'm like mm -hmm. oh this is funny and so you know this is the way and also people are you know they, they are more even even more amazed that you know that I serve Yeshua as my Messiah you know Amen. and that we you know, that that's the way that Adonai has worked with me and that I know that he will continue to work with a lot of people. That's right. God is, a, is, is a, you know, he's he's moving his spirit in these last days. And he's working with you that way. And God is bringing people to the light, which is amazing. You were mentioning a song, which we want to play right now. Uh, you have a new single. Um, it's called Abraham Aveno, uh, which means um, our father Abraham. And can you roll that clip, please? Um, so tell us a little bit about this um, this song you wrote, um, Abraham Avenu, and um, you know what inspired you behind this song. And man, the scenery that you picked for this <laughs> video—it's beautiful. I mean, I wish I was in the video. I wish I was there with you, you know, celebrating. It was a beautiful scenery. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I have to thank uh, this. Uh, this is a historical museum house here in Winter Park. Orlando, um, Florida, and um, this is, is called Casa Feliz. And so I had worked with them with Upper Orlando in the past and they were kind enough to let me use these facilities. Um, and they basically sponsored my video by letting me use the facilities. So that's amazing, Baruch Hashem. <laughs> it's beautiful, um, yeah. It's a beautiful place. It's amazing. And even inside, it's more amazing. But anyways, um, so the song, I did not write the song. This is a... Uh, us, uh, you know, more than 400, 500 years old song. And it was actually used uh, as part of the, you know, um, a liturgic uh, song in the synagogues. Oh, so it was, it was part of liturgy. Wow. Yes. Yes. And because it tells the story of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And it tells a story of how King Nimrod, you know, um, wanted to take his life when he realized that he was going to be the light unto the nations. Mm -hmm. So as soon as he knew that there was a prophetic promise, you know, uh, he went on to try to kill him. But so the song tells us a story how his mother, you know, was able to, to, you know, to, to, to hide and have him mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and give birth to him. Uh, so, and, and, you know, to me, it was very important that I, that we would bring this song into life. The guitar player also has a part of this in this, because he's also a messianic, um, you know, a musician and oh, wow. yes, he's, I amazing. love the way he plays though. It's like, oh, I, I was inspired by his playing as oh. well. He is amazing. He is amazing. And if I told you the story and the testimony, how, I got to meet with him for this project. That'll take us another hour. <laughs> but, <laughs> but 
But the thing is that he brought the idea of, you know, of starting off with this song, which I had heard before. And the second we we got together to put the musical, you know, elements together, it all made sense to me. First of all, because of the rhythmics of the song. It's mm -hmm. very, it pertains, it's very, you know, very. It, it aligns with our culture, but also it has the Israeli, you know, elements as well. Oh, yes, yes. It's, it's a very, it, it suits you. It suits the way you guys uh, performed it. Um, I mean, it caught my attention when I first saw it. Yes, and so I said, well, you know, and what better, what a better uh, message than this, you know, Father Abraham, mm -hmm. you know, when we trace history, when we trace our, you know, lineage, when we, when we go back and back and back, we all go, you know, to one point. And so I said, well, this is the best place, you know, where we should start. And so and so we did it. Amen. And uh, we were very glad you did. It was a very nice song to hear. The scenery, like I said, everything was very, it caught my attention. Um, you made another song or um, a video. It's called Quiero Conocerte. And in English that means I want to know you. Um, so let's show the clip of this song real quick. Wow, so this worship song, um, Quiero Conocerte, I Want to Know You. You know, uh, my wife, uh, Rosemary, Reverend Seen Rosemary, as um, you know, I told her about you and she wanted to know who you were, so she looked you up. And the next thing you know, I come home and she's listening to this song. She goes, I love this song. <laughs> and, oh, I'm like, and I'm like, oh, okay, awesome. This is a nice worship song. And um, so tell me a little bit about this song. So that song I wrote right when I started my journey, probably 12 years ago. Wow, 12 years ago. Uh, and it wasn't until eight years after that, or even 10 probably, that I recorded it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you listen to the song, it's actually, it's the journey. I was in the middle of wanting to know whom, you know, who the Messiah is, who is god you know who are you i mm -hmm. have heard about you all my life mm -hmm. i have read the scriptures i have you know gone to all of these churches i have been this and that i really want to get to know you because i was in that in that stage where it was crucial it was either i would go this way or the other way mm -hmm. and so the the part that i like the most about the song which is exactly what where God was taking me to towards this journey along this journey is every time I hear a voice and I decide to walk towards you, I feel like the world it's I'm being separated from the world. And that's exactly how it happened, you know, through all this journey. And I'm sure you can identify. Oh, with yes, it. yes. Or a lot of people can identify with it. You lose, you lose so many things along the way. I mean, things that are, some of them are very precious to you. And then you realize that, you know, that they weren't, they weren't as valuable. Mm -hmm. And some things are necessary that you give up. And so, and among those things, I have to tell you the truth. One of them at that time, it was music. Mm -hmm. I, I had to, I had to stop for a while. And, um, and, you know, and so that song, it, it, it was, it, it's the birth of my journey in that sense. Oh, wow. It's, it's a beautiful song. Uh, you should probably write it in English and sing it in English, you know, so people can enjoy it. I have the English version, it. actually. Oh, I really? You got to release it so people yes. can enjoy it. Um, or English speaking people can enjoy that because I'm sure uh, they're going to benefit from that testimony that's in that song and the lyrics of that Amen. song. Uh, it's a beautiful song. Like I said, my wife loves it. And uh, my 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 daughter Eliza, she's she's four years old, 
and she loves it as well. She sings. She goes, oh, Dad, play that video. Yesterday I was working on this for the interview today, and I was listening to the video. She goes, play that video, Dad, play that video, because she loved it as well. Um, so um, we want to get into a little bit, as time is, is running on our program, and we really want to cover so much, but we may not be able to cover everything, but we do want to talk about your next uh, song that you wrote. I believe you wrote the song. It's called Morena Me Llaman. And the English translation is that they call me dark skinned. Uh, so let's roll the clip of that, please. Tell us a little bit about that song. So that song, I did not write that song either. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that song, um, it's a song, uh, it's a Ladino song. It's a, it's what we, what they call, it would be a ballad or a song set on a poem. And usually in Ladino music, you know, Ladino, it's full of poetry. Mm -hmm. It's such a rich you know, rich uh, heritage because Jewish in Spain, you know, the, 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 the years that they were there, the centuries that they were there, they enriched the culture with so much art, so much music, uh, you know, poetry. And also because there were the Muslim as well, the Arab, you know, the, the, the Spanish themselves. So it was, a, it was a mixture of art. And so they had a lot of, of poems and stuff that were, the, you know, that were enriching their culture. And so Morena Me Llaman, it, sets, it is set to a poem that has, it is believed to have its um, origins in the book of song, Songs of Songs from, from oh. yeah, from Solomon. And, uh, and the reason why is because when she says, I am dark skin, oh. but I was not born like this. So what you're seeing is not what it is, refer referring to a higher soul. Right, right, just right. As, just as in the book of Song of Songs, it says when she refers to Solomon, one of, one of his, you know, concubines, she says, do not look at me for, you know, I am dark, but there is something else referring to the soul. There There's is more to me than meets the eye, right? There's more to me that... Right. Right. So, um, you know, it sets, it is set to that poem. And, um, and also there are some cultural, you know, background history to it, but, um, but that's basically what it is. And it's funny, um, not funny, but I want to share a, a fact about the song is that it was used, uh, for Shabbat back in the days oh, because, awesome. good to hear because that. of his higher, you know, of, a, of its higher context. Right, right, right. Yeah, there's a lot of things that, you know, people don't know it's good to bring to, to the light, you know, that a lot of this music, this Latino music, where it came from, you know, historically, you know, and how it was used within our Jewish people. Yes. Um, you know, I have a, a friend of mine who loves Latino music, too, and I'm sure that he wants to let him know who you are. He's going to be into you, and uh, I'll never hear the end of it, <laughs> but <laughs> praise the Lord for that. I mean, okay. and I think you know, by you bringing out this music, you're showing a lot of people the history of the Jewish people, the Sephardic Jewish people, the Middle Eastern connection that it has. And um, and it's a beautiful thing because you don't find too many artists that are Messianic that are actually bringing forth this type of music uh, right. to the stage, you know. And uh, we want to thank the Lord for that, that God is using you in that way. And then you could bless many people with your music because I know you you know you just don't sing Latino music you sing different types of music right. you know mm -hmm. and I think that God has given you that type of voice for you to be able to go in these different areas and you know we we thank the Lord whatever project you have that God blesses that project and mm -hmm. and you can see fruit from that blessing you know you can see lives change you can see people um, being motivated to 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 be inspired by who God is through your lyrics. And through the lyrics, actually, you may have from other people that, you, that you're actually bringing forth those lyrics today in modern time, which mm -hmm. were lost for so many years, you know, and that's good because we need to hear a lot of times those things that have been lost and bring them back into the future so we can hear what's happening in our present day and also in the future as well. Amen. Yes. 
Yeah. Now, Arlene, do you have anything that you would like to share from your heart uh, to our viewers today? Well, you know, this week, as we were studying this week's Torah portion, you know, mm -hmm. I shared something with my kids um, that stayed with me. You know, one of those times when you're talking with someone and, you know, the Ruach just plant something on your heart and you're ministered by mm -hmm. it in such a way that you think that you're you're ministering them but also it's more important you're ministering yourself more than anything <laughs> right and i was talking to my kids and i was talking about you know um the meaning of 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 the parsha and you know the gift donation you know an offering um and um and i was telling them that our our gift what we carry it's the very offering that we have to the Lord. And, you know, the music, I finally understood that music in my life was a gift, is a gift that was given to me for a higher purpose. Uh -huh. To serve him, to bring my offering to the tabernacle, you know, my offering to the altar. And so in my case, it is music, but I was telling my kids that doesn't matter what you operate from, from what platform you're operating from, what are your, what is your calling? You might be a doctor, you might be, you know, an artist, you might be a teacher, no matter what, if that is your vocation, you know, and you finally submit to, you know, to, to God's um, instruction, to God's word and to God's, God's purpose over your life, you come to understand that what you have is a gift. That's right. And that when you embrace your gift, then you can truly share it with others, especially as a musician, letting ego step aside, the ego, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. letting ego step aside. And knowing that whatever you do, you don't do because of yourself, but because it is a responsibility that you have before the Lord. And you cannot contain it anymore. Amen. When you finally realize that whatever you have to say, whatever you have to tell, whatever you have to share, you will do it not thinking about even how you will look, but how you will make him look. And so... You know, my 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 word of encouragement is that this time that we're living in, and I shared this with you last night, mm -hmm. I am feeling that, you know, that the harvest is ready. <laughs> That's right. The harvest that is ready. It is at hand. And so whoever has a gift at this season that we're living in, it is the time to really bring your offering. Yes. You know? to 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 really establish the kingdom and you know and 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 kind of like get the coming of the messiah going <laughs> so that's my word of encouragement amen amen you know today um as we're, we're speaking today around the world um 1800 israeli time there is a call for every jew of every right. background to call to Mashiach to reveal himself. Um, although we know who the, who the Mashiach is, we know there's Yeshua, and we, we join our brothers today in praying yes. for the coming of the Messiah, and we know that he is coming soon. Uh, we know this by prophecy, we know this by what's happening in world events, what's happening, like you said, you felt that, that the harvest is ready, you know. Um, we had another person that said that as well that came on the show that felt that. And um, you know, this is something that's happening today. We know that we're in the, the, the year of the Shemitah. And mm -hmm. we know this is the time that you know, Yeshua could come in this year, you know. And we just praise Adonai that if he does come, he comes quickly. And uh, for those who don't know Yeshua, that, you know, we pray that their eyes be open and they can come and meet the Messiah that we know and not be deceived by the, the anti-Messiah that's coming very soon as well. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah, we want to thank you so much, Arlene, for coming out and um, sharing a little bit about yourself and, and your life, you know. And we want to invite you back in the future. Uh, you know, hopefully you'll come back and join us and give us more about your your what's going on in your life. Um, do you have, um, tell the people where they could find you, where they can support you, where they can purchase your music, your, your media, social platforms, your outlets, anything you have out there you want to share with us? 
Yes, so they can find me on Facebook, uh, Arlene Ramirez on Facebook. Also, they can find me on Instagram as Operanima. Um, also, they can go to my website. I would say that that's the easiest way to find me through my website because there's a link to it, to all the other platforms. There's a link to the Spotify, iTunes platform. Also, they will see about um, our upcoming projects pertaining to the Latino music project and our upcoming music release uh, releases that are coming up that I'm very excited for. So praise God. Be on the lookout. Praise God. We will. And, and if they want to donate to a project of yours or anything, can they do so on your websites? They can also do so through my website. There's a donate link there where they can donate towards um, towards our ministry. And yes, and I am always very grateful for your support and hoping that this, you know, um, it, it serves for the purpose of our, you know, our Abba, Father, Amen. Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. And if they want to also, I guess, download, because now everything is digital, you know, CDs are going away. Yes. If they want yes. to download a digital music uh, All my from music. you. Yes, you can go through to my YouTube channel too, where you can watch videos and also um, the music you can download. Um, like I said before, Spotify mm -hmm. and iTunes. Those are my two uh, digital music platforms. Well, we just praise God and we just hope that people reach out to you. They write to you, they, they support your ministry and uh, and they do get a hold of these digital uh, music that you have, you know, and they can be blessed by what God has placed in your vocal cords. Amen. Amen. To bless the rest of us because, you know, um, you know, we, we hear our faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God. So if Amen. we hear the music that Adonai has placed in you, our faith will also increase because it's his word mixed into those lyrics. So we praise the Lord for that. We thank you once again for joining us. And um, we want to show you what's coming up next in two weeks. of the night you don't want to miss that you want to make sure you tune in you want to make sure you let your family your friends anybody you could find scream it on the hallways you know post it on facebook let people know what's happening in our show um come join um come to our web page come to our youtube page uh congregation bethany manu philly and uh put a thumbs up on there you know subscribe and every time there's a new program it'll come up on the um on your notifications also look for us every first and uh, third Shabbat of the month at 1 p.m. Our videos will be released then. And then after that, you can watch it anytime you would like. Um, please support this ministry by going to our webpage, bethemanuel.org. Uh, you can send your donations there. Please indicate when you go there on PayPal that the donation you're giving is for walking the footsteps of the Moshiach. So we can hear from you and stuff like that as well. Also, you can write to us at Congregation Beth Emanuel, uh, Philly at gmail.com you can reach us there and just put in your subtitle put walking in the footsteps of the moshiach and let us know if you have any questions or things you would like to see as you know we are a new show we're starting out and we're we're looking at all the areas in messianic judaism it's music it's teachings uh it's culture everything about judaism itself and you're going to be seeing guests that are going to be coming out throughout the show from different type of backgrounds 
uh, musicians, maybe some painters. We have directors. Uh, we have a lot of rabbis coming as well. And we just hope that you're going to be blessed. And once you see the commercial coming up on Facebook or on YouTube, on our platforms, and you see our guests, you can write in your questions there to Congregation Beth Emanuel, fila at gmail.com. And let us know what questions you would like to ask those people that are coming out on our show or guest. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. And we want to thank once again, Arlene Ramirez for joining us. And um, bless you, Arlene. Bless your husband, um, your family. And I know we're going to be seeing you soon. For those who don't know, she's going to be joining us on Pesach here at Congregation Beth Emanuel coming up on March 27th. And we just can't wait to have you here and to be blessed by your music and whatever God has for us that time. Amen. Amen. I can't wait either. Thank you so much for your invitation and may Hashem bless your ministry greatly. Thank you so much. We want to thank you again. And remember, we'll see you here again in two weeks, the same Hashem time and the same Hashem channel. Amen. Shalom. God bless you. <laughs>